Do you like my t-shirt? You're one in a melon. It's, it's actually Charlotte's t-shirt. Don't tell her. Shh. Hey everyone, it's Jamie. Welcome to my trans summer survival guide. So the weather is getting warmer, the sun is shining, or at least it has been. Typically today for this video, it's not shining. Thank you. Must mean it's summer. But however much people seem to look forward to this time of year, when you combine it with being trans, it brings up a couple of challenges. For me, over the years, there have been a few standout things that when being trans is combined with summer can be particularly tricky. These top three things are binding, wearing less, and the testosterone sweat. So binding, it's got to be talked about first because it's the main one. I mean, binders are horrible regardless of the weather. It's not even as if they're like a nice warming insulating vest in winter. They still suck, but their suckiness is just on fire in the summertime. Hey, see what I did there? On fire? Because it's... Yeah, that sucked more than binding. Binders are designed to compress, so they're not the most comfortable or breathable thing in the world. Essentially, they are the exact opposite of what you want to be wearing on a hot day. So therefore, it's really important to be that extra little bit more careful in summer when binding. This is mostly because you'll be sweating more than you would be if you weren't binding. I know, a little bit gross, but it's true. So make sure that you drink plenty of water because of this. And also, warning, increased perspiration will lead to an increased difficulty in removing your binder later. Maybe look into wearing three quarter length binders. I always used to wear the ones that kind of stopped on the rib cage rather than the ones that went right down to my hips because they were just easier to wear. They compressed less places because they were shorter. And in the summer they meant that my stomach could still catch a breeze. It wasn't much, but it helped. Also make sure you buy an official binder like from Underworks or GC2B or G2CB. I can never remember which way they go. Let me let me just look it up because I don't want to say their name wrong. GC2B. There we go. So definitely check those two places out for binders. It is a little bit more costly, but definitely worth it. They're safer and more comfortable and they bind better. Basically just make sure you buy an official one. Do not exercise or overly exert yourself when binding. And this is particularly relevant when it's summer and when it's really hot outside. Take as many breaks as you can throughout the day. I used to sew in Velcro, so I would buy the Underworks Tri-Top. So that's the one that kind of stops. You can't see my hand, but my hand is just out of shot here. And I would sew in Vel like a strip of Velcro down the side here. Still did the job of binding just as well, but it meant that I could like have a quick release. So I used to just pop to bathrooms for like a power breathe, like a power nap for air. The Velcro also made sure that I avoided getting stuck half in or out my binder. Very, very useful when you're sweaty. So that's it for binding. Basically drink lots of water, buy an official binder, take as many breaks as possible and don't do strenuous exercise. Be Safe. Next up is wearing less. When the weather gets warmer, people inevitably start wearing less. The winter jackets, the jumpers, boots go back in the cupboard and out come the flip flops and the vests and the hats and the shorts. And this means that things like layering and using clothing to cover up certain things can become trickier unless you are willing to melt. In my opinion, clothes also tend to be lighter in colour and material and this coupled with wearing less can make things like covering a binder or covering body shape a bit trickier. In terms in terms of binding, one thing that I really struggled with was vests. I wasn't a massive fan of vests because I have noodle arms and they just don't look good on me. But I did want to wear them sometimes when it was particularly hot and I saw friends wearing vests and was like, you know what, I want to join in on that vest party. But vests are kind of tricky to wear with a binder because most of them are low cut on the armpits, have little thin straps, shoulder, shoulder bits. I don't know, thin thin bits here and low necks. But there are vests out there that will hide a binder. Look for ones that are essentially like t-shirts but without the sleeve bit so they kind of come out to here. They've got thicker bits on the top. Having a high neckline more like a t-shirt and also a higher armpit bit. Armpit bit. Armpit bit. Armpit bit. <laughs> Sounds funny. A higher armpit bit. That will cover your binder as well. The armpit bit. <laughs> sorry, I'm just going to laugh every time I say that. Also goes for scars. If you have top surgery scars that you would prefer to cover up. So before I had top surgery, I could not for the life of me find a vest that would hide my binder. So my adorable and wonderful girlfriend, Shaba, searched for ages and bought me a little bundle of vests that hid my binder. And it was the cutest thing 
ever. So I definitely know there are ones out there and actually I was looking on Top Man the other day for my summer wardrobe and I definitely found some that I was like, that would hide a binder. There are more that wouldn't, but there are nice ones out there that will. I also found that darker colors and looser fit tops worked as well because the loose fit kind of made up for the lack of layering and obviously darker colors work better to hide binders. Like I would never wear white before I had top surgery because you could just see a binder through it. In terms of body shape, I always used to struggle and feel very uncomfortable in summer because I would use layering like the use of shirts and then hoodies or jumpers and jackets and everything to hide curves like my hips and any lumps and bumps that binding didn't quite flatten or that I felt binding didn't quite flatten because actually looking back, my chest always looked flat. It was just me. But in summer, it's not possible to wear all those layers because you will just sweat a ridiculous amount. So I would go again for looser fit clothes like with binding, but also avoiding long line stuff because I tended to find that unless it was like oversized, which I didn't used to be comfortable wearing, but I'm obsessed with now, longer line stuff would really like cling to my hips. It would just make me feel very, self-conscious. And I did avoid most vests. As I said previously, that was more related to the fact I had noodle arms than anything else. I still don't really wear vests very much. I would also pair looser fit t-shirts with light shirts. So like, you know the kind of shirts you can hold up and see through and they're just very light material. My, my voice, why does my voice break in videos? Oh, I still sound like I'm having like testosterone voice breakage. Like this one. So you can still see through it, but it's still a shirt and it could be very useful to wear. So yeah, you might be a little bit warm, but it's really not too bad, particularly if you wear shorts. Now, finally, testosterone. I never thought that this would bring up any extra issues in summer until I started testosterone and summer came about. But basically, tea can make you sweat more. The increased sweating from tea, put together like the increased sweating caused by summer, will make you feel like a lit candle. This extra sweating can be uncomfortable, particularly if you're still binding, and just a little bit smelly. So drink lots of water, again, like binding. You don't need to like double up and drink extra water for the extra sweat and extra water for extra binding. Just make sure that you drink a really good amount of water in a day and you're staying hydrated. I feel like a parent, stay hydrated. Maybe double up on deodorant. I have no idea if this helps, but it certainly makes me feel like I'm trying. And wear as little as you're comfortable with, and I know this kind of goes against the previous two points, but as little as you are comfortable with wearing and also looser fit clothing can really help. Just as a last thing, and I don't have a solution to this one, I just want to talk about it. The prickly sweats. Can anybody else relate to the prickly sweats on testosterone? I only really get them in summer and they are the most horrible thing. I feel like an inverted cactus, you know, like the spines of poking me all over, or you're like I'm hugging a cactus, something to do with a cactus. I, I really haven't found anything that will help with these. And genuinely the only thing I do is like a weird dance and scratch and like jiggle. Anyway, that's everything I have today. I hope that this has helped. Let me know if you have any extra tips. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.